everybody. Happy Sunday. So we're going to have a little, we're going to do, we're going to switch gears tonight. We're going to do a little software. Um, I haven't had a software class for a couple of months, so we're going to do a little software tonight. And hi, Colleen. So um, I have done, um, I love to do photo stitches. And what photo stitch is, it is done in the brother PE design slash baby lock palette software. Um, it is the software that brother and baby lock um, distribute. And, and that is the best photo stitch program I have ever seen. Um, I can get amazing results. And um, I do love the soft, I, I love doing these photo stitches. I've been doing this for, I don't know, close to 20 years. Um, I got my first uh, photo, my fo first P design program in um, about 2001. So it's over 20 years now, and that was P Design 5. And I bought it just to do photo stitches. Um, I have a lot of family pictures. I've done a lot of people, a lot of pictures of my family. I've done a lot of black and white pictures. Um, my parents took my parents took photographs, and a lot of them were black and white, of course, at that time. So I really, really enjoy um photo stitch. So normally, so normally I teach this, I've taught this class over and over since P design six. So now we're on P design 11 is the current version of the software. I have had to make some alterations in the way the software works. Um, the, the software works a little differently now. So I've had to make some alterations in my settings and so on. So I know a lot of you have PE Design Next, which is version nine, or if you have the Baby Lock version, Palette Nine. Um, so I wanted the first one of the first things we're going to do is I'm going. I have written notes. Okay, so here's my notes. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's a little glary. Let me turn this down a little bit. My lamp down. This I have full notes for what I have done over the years, and I've rewritten these in all the different, um, all the different versions. <laughs> I have version six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't do one in 10, but I have one in 11, which 10 and 11 are almost the same. Um, so in the Dropbox, there are these written out notes for P design 11, which will also work for 10. So if you happen to have 10, 10 and 11 are almost identical. And then PE design next, which is version nine or palette nine. Okay. So I have these here. Normally when I teach this class, I just follow my notes and we do this little dog and he's really cute. But I have just done a photo stitch of a darling little girl and her family allowed me to use that picture. Um, and so we're actually going to do Harper tonight. Um, I wanted to show you um, a lot of people say, oh, why don't you do people? Well, I do mostly people, actually. And you just happen to see me doing animals. Um, animals are very easy to photo stitch for the most part because they don't have flesh tones. So I would tell you to start with an animal, a favorite dog, a favorite cat. Um, they often are easier because you have a little less, um, you don't have so much flesh tone and stuff to deal with as you do with people. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what you want to look at for in a picture. Not every picture is going to make a good photo stitch. I'm just going to tell you. You need to pick your pictures. So I'm very careful how I pick my pictures. And I'm just going to tell you how I do that. But so tonight, we're not going to do the little puppy dog. We're going to do Harper. Um, so, but I want to show you where you can go to get these notes. Okay, so a lot of you give have questions about where do I go to get the notes? Or where do I go to get things on the group? Okay. 
And remember, the very first post, uh, the very first post in the group on Facebook, on So Along With Jan, the Facebook group, the very first post is a Dropbox link, okay? And that is going to be where all of my files will go. So you can go download the entire Dropbox or you can just dial, download the items you want, okay? So the first thing I wanna show you tonight is where to go to get these notes. I'm gonna kind of loosely follow these just because I have some things written in them. And I also have some settings in here. So I'm going to kind of loosely um, follow these, but I'm going to go, I'm kind of, I'm just going to do a photo stitch for you. The way I did this, I did this right before Christmas time and I gave it to the family and the mother of this little girl um, before Christmas. And I just wanted to kind of show you how I did it. And I wanted to, to do one. Um, I wanted to do one that was, actually a little a, a, a little a person. So you can see that I actually do do people. I'm gonna show you some pictures at the end of some of the people I have done. Um, I've done quite a lot of people actually. Yes, Sissy, I am recording this. So it would be record, it will be on Facebook and on YouTube. Yes. And I will also put the link, for those of you who are watch, gonna watch on YouTube, I will put the link to the Dropbox for the files for these that I'm going to show you. But if you're a Facebook, um, if you're on Facebook, if you're a member of So Along With Jan, um, if you're not, please come join us on Facebook, So Along With Jan. Um, but I'm going to show you where these links are so you can go and get all of these different things. I mean, I've been doing um, classes for four years now on So Along With Jan, just a shy of four years, like maybe a week shy of four years. And um, I have been doing that and I have all of these files up there and there's lots of free files. So if you haven't downloaded some of these, please do, okay? So if you give me a second, I'm gonna turn off the banner and then I'm going to, sh I'm going to be um, sharing my screen with you, okay? So I'm gonna do that quickly now and I'm gonna try to watch all the comments on my tablet over here. Now remember, we'll have a drawing at the end of the, the class. So make sure you comment, okay? And that's how you get entered in, in the drawing for a, for a prize. And I will ship this to somebody if they're from away from the, the area. If, they're, if you're local, you can pick it up the store. But this week's prize is gonna be a Kimber Bear. Okay, these were fun to do. We did these during COVID. This was the first class that we did when we were closed during COVID. I, we, we had a couple of days of class and we made these Kimber Bears. So I have like three of them. Okay, so one of the, the, the prize tonight is going to be this little Kimber Bear. Okay, all right. So remember, you have to, you have to comment in order to be, um, you, have to be you have to comment in order to be um, enrolled in the drawing. Okay, so let me do, I have to share my screen with you. So just give me a second here. Oh, somebody said they found Dropbox already. So I'm just going to show everybody where it is because I get a lot of questions and I keep telling everybody it's the first post in the group. Okay, so it's always there and you can go download anything from there. Okay, I will not. Oh, <laughs> I will not ship outside of the somebody just came in from Canada. Unfortunately, I can't ship outside of the United States. So if you win, I can't ship outside of the United States because it costs so much because I'm just giving these away. So people that are in the United States, I'm so sorry. I would love to be able to to um, to ship to Canada. <laughs> OK, but please watch because you'll be able to do everything else. OK. All right. So let me share my screen just a second here. I have to share my screen. I got to make sure that I get the right all the right things here. I always have buttons that need to go. Okay, I think I'm good. And I'm going to go over here to Facebook. And then I'm going to log out of Facebook. Okay? So, when you need to find all of the Dropbox files for, e for So Along With Jan, there's one Dropbox for the software classes, and there's one Dropbox for all the sewing and embroidering classes, okay? 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm on Facebook right now. I'm going to go to So Along With Jan. Now I have um, on the right, the left-hand side here, I have a little, um, a little shortcut that says So Along With Jan. So if you have that, you can press that. If you can't find it, if you go up to the search button, which is at the top kind of left-hand side, it says search Facebook, and you type in so along with Jan, it's going to come up, okay? And then if you're a member, which all of you, if you're here tonight, are a member of the group, and if you're watching this on YouTube, come over to Facebook if you'd like to be able to see the live videos and go ahead and sign in and, and request to join so along with Jan on Facebook because then you can see the live classes. The very first post on so along with Jan. Okay, right here. The very first post is the Dropbox. So this featured post at the very top here says Dropbox. Okay, so this is how you find it. You're going to click on that. And then inside the post, it says all the files I upload to this group are on Dropbox. Okay, there's two links now. The first one says sewing and embroidery classes. So you would then click this link if that's what you're looking for. It's going to take you to my Dropbox. Okay, yours is going to look just slightly different than this because I'm logged in. Okay, and it's going to give you a list of all these items and then I can download them. Okay. The other link is to software classes. That is where the photo stitch notes will be if you want to download those, okay? So I'm going to click on software classes. And the other, the other group is going to look just like this one. I'm not logged into this one here, so that's why mine, it, it went to my account, so that's why it looked different. But if you want to get the PE design photo stitch class notes. I, I went on, I clicked on the software link and I'm gonna go down here where it says photo stitch PED and so in other words, PE design and palette nine and 11, okay? All right. So I am going to click, I can click on that button and then see there's a button that says download. So that's going to download the version 11 notes, the version 9 notes, the graphic for the little dog exercise in the notes, the class that are the, the PES files so you can stitch out the little dog. And by the way, that will be the version 11 little dog and the color chart for the little dog. Okay. Yeah, you have to click on, yeah, you have to click on the top. So what, so it looks like this, when it says featured, you have to click on this button to open up the, um, at the top, you have to open up where it says featured here. You have to click on this to open up the Dropbox links because this is the, the actual post now. And then you can choose between the, the embroidery and software classes or the, I mean, sorry, in sewing and embroidery classes and the software classes, okay? So that way you have access to all the things that I put up there. I put lots of designs up there. I've got lots of information up there. So I, I wanted to tell you again where to get to those things, okay? Because this is a question I get all the time. How do I get to all these things? Where can I find it? And that's where it is. It's always on the group. OK, for those of you people that are watching on YouTube, I will put these links in. I will put the link to the photo stitch notes on, in the description. If you're watching on YouTube in the description below the, the actual video, there's a little place that says description. And that's where I will put the link to this. OK. No, you can, Rebecca, you don't have to copy it to Dropbox. You can download. If you have a Dropbox account, you can put it in your own Dropbox and then download it. I I have, it, it depends on if you're logged into Dropbox. It may say you can copy it and then put it over. But if you, um, 
if you are not logged in, then it will not ask you that. It'll just give you the option of downloading. So like normally when I see it, this is what it looks like. So this is the sessions on software, or in other words, this is where the photo stitch one is. And it, at the very top, it says copy to Dropbox or download. If you have a Dropbox account that you're logged into, yeah, you can copy it over to your own Dropbox if you want. Most people just want to download. And if you click download right now, everything in the Dropbox will show will, will download. Okay. So you can get everything all in one download. Or if you are just wanting that one item, you just go find the one item. It's just like a file folder. You just go to Photo Stitch PED and Palette 9. And then you can just download those items. Okay. So it's um, the folder says, sissy, the folder says, on, on here says photo stitch PED and palette nine and 11. That's what it says. So it's going to be in the P's. Yep. They're all in alphabetical order. Okay. So that's where these notes are. I have written these notes multiple times and, but I'm, I'm going to kind of loosely cut, follow them tonight, but we're going to do a different picture. So I wanted to show you that you can do people <laughs> and I have done lots of people. Um, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Okay, so we'll get rid of Dropbox. I'm going to log out of Facebook right now because sometimes StreamYard gets mad if you're logged into Facebook. So I'm just going to log out of Facebook and I'm going to go back to StreamYard. And then everything looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, share my computer screen with you. So in a second here, you should be seeing my computer screen. Okay. Now, I have both versions of PE Design that I can open on this computer, and I'll probably open PE Design 11 and PE Design Next. So if you have PE Design Next, it is a very good software. I still go back to it, and um, I still use it quite a lot, actually. So if that's what you have, use PE Design Next. It works just fine. Um, it does not have the same thread charts in it that P Design 11 does because it's newer. Um, and so I can't use the, I've been using mostly the brother threads lately. Um, so I, um, I've been using mostly the, the brother threads lately. So those are not, the full chart is not in next. So it's harder for me to do the same thing. So I'll probably do this in PDesign 11, but I'll talk to you about um, PDesign Next as well. So you know what settings? The settings are different because the software works differently, okay? So in order to use PDesign, you do have to, um, you do have to use a, a dongle or a security device. So I have both of them in tonight so I can open these softwares. Um, they are back compatible. So like I can open P Design Next with my P Design 11 dongle, but I can't open 11 with my version nine dongle. So that's why I have both of them plugged in tonight. So if I open them both, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and open P Design 11. And then when we get to the point of setting, doing the settings, I will tell you the differences. Okay, so hopefully it's behaving itself. Yep, I think so. Okay. Now, a couple of the things I want to talk to you about before we start the actual picture is um, I want you to I want to talk about the pictures a little bit. Okay. Um. P Design and Palette contain six photo stitch digitizing programs. So there's actually six different programs that do different types of photo stitch. The one that I use for the most part is Photo Stitch One and in color. And if I go to the image tab up here at the top, I can go to Photo Stitch One. Okay. And there's color, sepia, gray, and mono. So what color is, is the one I usually use, Photo Stitch 1. 
Photo stitch one sepia is going to give you kind of the antique looking kind of yellow tones. Gray is going to be black and white. So sometimes I do use gray. And then mono is really cool because if you have the right photo, it's really cool because you can actually do a black and white photo that just has black thread in it. How about P Design Plus Two? Yes. So P Design Plus Two, Mitzi, is going to be basically the same as P Design Next, which is version nine. So when you when you hear me talking about the settings, you will want to use the settings I talk about for version nine. Okay. Or next is what it's calling me. Okay. All right. So yes, the P Design Plus um, softwares, there was a plus and a plus two. The plus two was like version nine or next. And, and it's quite good. You don't have quite as many um, hoop options there, but it still will do a very fine job of photo stitch. So if you have that, that would be a wonderful software. You will not be able to, um, uh, you don't have to have a brother machine. It's just the, um, Barb, it's just the software. Um, there may be a photo stitch software in, um, in the, the Viking software, but I do not know that software at all. So I know some people, you can use, you can use um, the P design with any version or any machine because you can send, send it out in um, other things besides PES. So yes, you would be able to use it with your Viking, but it would not, you just need to have this software to do it. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about these different things. So I'm just kind of talking about, so there's this photo stitch one. That's what we're going to be using. Those are the pictures that are going to be very realistic looking. And then um, I have seen there, I have never seen a photo stitch. Jan says that the Viking software does not have as good a photo stitch. And there are photo stitches in other softwares. I have never seen one that's as good as this. And so the P design, P design plus software is plus two. The plus plus is not very good because it was older. And then the plus two is like version nine. So plus two works pretty good. Um, but I have never seen a better software than this for photo stitch. There are some other ones now that are new that I have not seen that I would like to look at. Um, see if I can get some like, you know, samples so I can just look at them because there's a couple of them out there that people say they use. So I would like to see those. Okay. Photo stitch one is the one that I use because that's going to give you that realistic picture. Okay. Um, I do not have it on the website, um, Colleen, because it is not, it, we, they, they don't allow us to put it up on the website and advertise the price. So it's sort of like a sewing machine. So you can um, call the store. And we have it in stock. So I just can't say how much it is online because it's against the dealer thing. So so if you call us um, Tuesday, I'll be there Tuesday, Colleen. You can call me and I can talk to you about the software. Okay, so Photo Stitch 1. Photo Stitch 2 has the color and the mono um, availability. And what that is, it's kind of an interesting, kind of like a... Tweedy looking more like a, a cross, not cross stitch, but like, like, um, it, it's, it's kind of a line, like lines and stuff. It's, it's just different and, and it's an interesting effect, but it isn't realistic. So depending on what you're looking for, um, Sissy, you actually can't go online to see the cost of them because we're technically not supposed to be putting it online. I, I was told I'm not allowed to put the software online. So it's sort of like a sewing machine. Brother doesn't allow some of the machines online. So, um, so photo stitch two, color and mono. That is something that I do not use very often, but it is an interesting effect. Okay. So depending on what you're looking for. So I am going to be using photo stitch one tonight. Okay. Now, I'm looking at the first page of my notes, and I just want to go through a couple of things. Um, I want to say that not every picture is going to work as a photo stitch. Uh, no, they don't, um, Barb. They don't have free updates. 
they do updates, but not upgrades. So yes, there are some updates occasionally, but there's no upgrades that are free. So it's different. Um, not every photo is going to be a good photo stitch. Okay. So these are the things that I look for when I'm looking for a good photo and you have to kind of pick your photos. Not everyone is going to be perfect. And what I tell people is if you have the choice of maybe three pictures to choose from, then you can be looking for these things. Okay. So this is the stuff that I look for when I'm doing photo stitch. One of the things is I want clear pictures. You don't want them to be blurry. So good, clear pictures. Most cell phones anymore have really good cameras on them. So you, you can get really good pictures even with cell phones. Personally, my least favorite um, pictures to do are um, professional photography because they're very dark. Okay. So I actually like, you know, photos that I take of my cell phone or people have taken with their phones or what or their cameras better. Okay. Use photos with detail and distinct colors. When looking for detail, think large. Do not go overboard with tiny details. This will make the photo stitch too busy. So in other words, don't try to do a group of 20 people and expect it to be noticeable who these people are. Okay? You want to do one, two, maybe three people. What makes a good picture for me is to see the people or the animals' eyes. I also like to do landscapes. So I've done quite a few landscapes, but look for large details. And I like to be able, if I'm doing a person, I want to see their eyes because their eyes are their life. Okay. And when you see this little girl, this little girl knows everything about what there is about life because you can just see it in your hair eyes. Okay. So that's something I look for. So when I saw this picture, I thought I have to do it. Okay. Um, the subject of the photo should be fairly large. This is related to this group photos do not work well as there are too many small details. Again, too many small details. Work with your photo in an editing program. Now I don't actually do that very often. You can, if you've got a particularly blurry photo, you might be able to sharpen it up and and get it to look better so that when you bring it into the software we can work with it even more so i usually work with the with the picture almost straight out of the camera in the software every now and then i got to bring it into a a like a, a, a digital imaging program um like for instance i had one that had like a textured paper it was a um it was a professional photography picture and it had a textured paper. And so my P design was picking up all those, that texture and the paper, it was really weird. So I had to take it into some software to kind of blur it and then bring it back less blurry. And I got rid of that, that texture look in the paper. So sometimes I use a digital imaging program to be, but be, to be quite honest, I usually just use the software because it has some imaging um, stuff right in the software that we can use. And we'll, we'll do that tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, scan your photo. Um, most scanners now are between 300 and 600 DPI. I usually scan at about 600 now. I used to always say at least 300, but you know, a lot of printers hardly scanned at 300. Now mine scans at 600. So if you have a picture you're scanning in, you know, scan at a pretty good quality. 600 is plenty enough. I've, I've done tons and tons that were scanned at 300. So um, most of the time, I would guess most of your scanners are now 600 DPI as a default. Okay. And then use photo editing options in the palette or, or P design software to enhance your photo. We're going to do that. The sharpening tool will add depth to the photo. And I often have to lighten things in order to um, get the flush tones to look right. Everything is going to stitch darker than what it looks like on the screen. So if it looks good on the screen, it may be 
it, it's still going to stitch out darker because remember we're using thread it's not we're not printing this we're using thread okay so that's some of my things so the big thing that i put on the bottom of the first page of this little handout is warning photo st stitch is very addictive and requires patience okay if you have a digital photo you, you do need to scan it, correct? If you have a digital photo, no, you do not need to scan it. If it's digital and it's on your computer, just take it direct. That's what I did with this. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, Lisa. If you don't need to scan anything. If it's a, if it's a paper photo, like out of a frame, you know, something that, a, you know, you, you took and you want a photo stitch or out of a note, out of a book, then yes, you would need to, you would need to scan it. But otherwise, just right out of your camera is fine. Okay. Um, photo stitch is very addictive, but it does require patience. Some of these designs take five or six hours to stitch because there's a lot of stitches in them and some could take up to 20. So I'll show you some of my, my photo stitches at the end. And some of these took 20 hours to stitch out. So relax, be patient and enjoy creating these beautiful photos, photos that it's photo art. And my mother painted. So my mother was a painter. I can paint too, but I just happen to paint with thread. I've never been able to paint with paint, but I can paint with thread when I started doing these. And I just love doing these. Okay. So this is my way of painting. To me, they look like paintings. Um, I had somebody come into the store that was just odd because they said, oh my gosh, I thought those were paintings back there. And there, there's, a, I have a whole bunch of photo stitches up at the store and um, they look like paintings when you, when, especially when you walk in the store. Okay. All right. So let's, let's get started with Harper here. So what I'm going to do is that the first thing we need to do when we're looking at our P design, this is P design um, 11. And if you give me a second, I can open up P design next. So you can see it looks just a little bit different, but not much. So I'm just going to open up that software too. Okay, so this is P Design 9 or next. Just looks just slightly different. It's going to have the same tab. Okay, the tab that we need in order to do this is called the image tab. So we're going to run to the image tab. And that's where the photo stitch digitizers are. Okay. So let me go back to 11. I'm probably just going to use 11 mostly. But I want to show people that you can do this in either one. Again, same tab, image. Okay. So we're going to go to the image tab. The P Design Plus program that a couple of you have will also have the image tab. Okay. So you can get in there. Okay. So I have my image tab. And I am going to click on what I want to do. And in this case, I want to do photo stitch one. And that's what I'm going to do. That's going to give me those realistic photos. Okay. I am going to use photo stitch one color. And that's normally what I use. I occasionally will use gray. But most of the time I use color. Even if I'm doing a black and white picture, I often use photo stitch one color. And it just happens to be black and white. Okay, so I'm going to click color, photo stitch one color. And then I'm going to have this little open an image, you know, this open the image window is going to open up. And I need to go find the image that I want to do. So I know that I put Harper's picture on my desktop in a folder here called Harper. Okay. And here's the picture. Now this picture, I'm just going to bring it open and on the and I'm just going to open it. I clicked on it and I'm going to hit open. Okay. And when I got this picture, this picture, um, Rebecca, it is right. It's the same, the second here, it's the same tab. It just says image. It's at the top. It's exactly where I found it. Yours is going to be the third one in. It's on a blue line and it says image. So it's exactly the same. It's just over one more tab because there's less tabs in P Design 11. Okay, so when I brought in Harper's picture, this picture was actually on Facebook. Okay, and I downloaded it from Facebook. And 
And like I said, okay, so when I saw this picture, she knows everything in the world. Look at those eyes. She knows everything. And this, that's what I look for when I look for photo stitches. I look for eyes, especially. And I also like animals with uh, with with big eyes so I can see the eyes. And they, because th their life is in their eyes, okay? Because you want these photo stitches to have life. And actually, if you give me a second, I'm just going to down, I'm going to, I'm going to bring this down for a second. And I will actually show you the picture of the photo stitch of her. So it's right here. Okay. I'm just going to open this up. And this is the actual photo stitch picture of her. It doesn't look as good at when you see it this way because it, you're not looking at it from a little bit further away. But this is the actual photo stitch. It's hanging at the store if you want to come see it. Um, it these look a little bit better when you're standing just a smidgen away from them because they look more like a painting. Okay. So this is the actual photo stitch of her, the print, the stitched out photo stitch. Okay. And it looks, I mean, if, when you look at it from a little bit of a distance, maybe four or five feet, you would think it's a painting. And the picture here in my, in my list is a little smaller. So it, it, it is, this one right here, you can see the blue around it. You can see that it, I mean, you would think that that's a picture. And these are some of the other ones I'll show you at the end. Okay, so I wanted to show you Harper. Okay, so let's bring this back open again. Um, so the next thing I need to do, we have, we, we have this picture. This was, like I said, um, does the picture need to be saved as a JPEG? Or this is a JPEG, um, bitmaps work um jpegs i usually use jpeg that's the a very you know very normal one so um this that's a nor very normal file so i use jpegs uh, bitmaps work also so depending on what you have okay so when i get when, like i said this was a facebook picture and i downloaded this from facebook and put it on my um on my computer. Okay. That's how I got it. It was not right out of the camera. This was one from Facebook. So it may be a little lower quality than some pictures, but it sure still turned out really well. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to click my photo stitch one color again, since it went out of there, since we were doing something else. And when I used to do these years ago, I always used to crop out the person's shape of their face and stuff and, and leave and get the background out. But I found that I like the backgrounds in because a, the designs lay much flatter. There's a lot of stitches in these and then they don't wrinkle as badly. If you don't crop them, you can crop it. And this is the screen you would do that in. Okay. So if you look over here on the left, there's all these different masks. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it at the square because that's what I want. You could do like these different shapes, like circles. And there's all these different shapes that that works with your picture. Most of the time I don't find they do. But if you want to mask it, the way you would do that is you pick the square. Okay. And then up here in the corner, there's going to be little nodes. And we're going to click on the second icon here and you can pull this down to the person's face and just keep clicking on there and you can actually mask out the entire background and just get the face if that's all you wanted. Okay. Now I find that these look better with a background because they also lay flatter when you stitch them out because of the number of stitches. Okay. So I'm actually not going to do that. I am going to, I'm just going to cancel that and go back. And I am going to, whoops, a second here. I want to go back and get rid of my, there we go. I want to go back and get my square again. But the one thing I did see when I was working with this one, and so I don't mask a lot of things anymore. I like the backgrounds, 
but this this background was a little bit busy. Um, so what I did is I noticed there was a lot of stuff behind her head. And what I wanted to see was her face and her eyes primarily. So what I ended up doing is I just cropped this. What is the clipping mask? Uh, what does that do the same thing? Yes, you can. Yes, down here in the corner, um, Lynn asked about this clipping mask. So yes, you can hit that button and it will actually auto mask around the figure. Some of them come out, as you can see, better than others. Now this to me was not a very good mask. OK, I very rarely use that because it hardly ever works the way I want it to. So I actually manually mask if I want to. I choose the mask and then I use this little second tool here. It looks like a little like an arrow without the tail. And then I go in and I physically go around the person. OK, but I would tell you, you probably do not need to do that most of the time. There are times when I do still, but I like to leave a background because it's part of the picture. And I think it also makes the face or the dog or the animals pop out a little bit more. Okay. So, but with this one, I noticed there was a lot of busy stuff going on behind her head. So I'm going to um, use my tool and I'm actually going to just crop this up and I'm going to use a square and what I did is I kind of cropped up and I actually cropped out her bottom hand here because it was a little blurry anyway because it looked like she was moving it and then what I did is I pulled up from the bottom I'm going to pull over from the side close to her face and maybe about in there and then I'm going to come, let's see, I think I want this one up a little bit more just to finish cropping out her hand. And then, but there was a lot of busy stuff over in this right hand or top left hand corner. It looked like there might've been toys, you know, and stuff. And so I wanted to crop some of that out and I'm just going to pull this over then. And what I ended up doing is kind of making a square that was basically just her face and the top of her shoulder and her little hand down here. Okay, so that's kind of what I thought was the, the primary focus that I wanted in this picture. So I have that kind of where I want it. And I just grab, there's little, there's little nodes on each side that you'll be able to grab the corners and pull them in with the top the second tool is the masking tool. The top tool is where you're going to pull in just the square. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. But this is where we get to fixing the, um, the picture. So like I, as I said, I, I rarely use any dig digital imaging program to do anything to the pictures. I use them as they are because there are really good tools right here. And one of the place that this is the place where the tool is. So if I go down here, and also if you're masking, this thing on the right here will let you blow up closer to the picture. So if you're masking and you need a bigger, bigger picture so you can get around the little, the little features, then you can do that. Okay, that's what this slider thing is, is, is a zoom on the, on the side, but I don't really need that for the square. OK, so I think I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go now, though, to Image Tune. And what Image Tune does is brings up my tools for my um, image. And it allows me to work with this picture. OK, so in this case, this original to sharp slider, you're going to always have to go up at least three clicks because this it has to be much sharper than you would ever think for it to get detailed. Because remember, we're not printing this. We are using stitches. It's thread. So it's going to be totally different. So I'm going to take this little slider and I'm going to go up at least three clicks. 
and I might even go up a fourth one and it's going to make it look really weird. So it's okay that it looks weird. It's sharpening the picture so that it can pull out those details that we want. Okay. I remember, if I remember correctly, I used four clicks on this. I haven't done this one since Christmas. So I'm just kind of doing this from memory. We can go back to three clicks. This is four. Okay. So I, I think I'm going to go with four. If I don't like it, I can come back and, and change it. Okay. And then the next three items, this is the brightness of the picture. The, first, the second one. The third one is the contrast of the picture. And then the fourth one is actually the blue green. So normally the blue green, I kind of leave it alone. The second one though, when I look at pictures of people that have flesh tones, I usually have to change the brightness up to make it a little brighter because what happens is that the skin tones turn too dark and too red if I leave it alone. So I am going to pull that slider up one click and just lighten the picture up a little bit. The ones that are hard here with this setting are the professional photography because so often what happens then is you get the glare from one of the lights that they have on the people that when they're taking their pictures. So this one doesn't have that. This was taken with a cell phone or a camera. I imagine a cell phone, okay? So I think the natural lighting is better than the, I have harder times with some of the professional photographs because there's too much unnatural lighting in the buildings, okay? So this one looks pretty good. I'm going to go up just one notch and I'm going to leave the contrast alone on this one. Okay, so sometimes, yeah, that's too much contrast. So what contrast does, see, it, it adds like there's a lot, a lot of dark and light. So it really makes it, you know, change a lot. And, and that's just too much. It's going to be glary on her forehead. But I did lighten it one click. So I just moved this slider up one click for the, for the, the brightness just to help with um, the flush tones. Otherwise, they turn out too dark because it's always going to stitch darker than it looks on the screen. Okay. All right. So I think I'm happy with that. I'm not sure about the sharpness. So we'll go on to the next step and see what happens. So I'm just going to click OK. And this is an auto digitizer, believe it or not. There's settings in here that you can play with. But um, it does a really good job. So I'm going to click Next at the bottom here. And at this point, I want to I want to make sure that I have the right frame chosen. What happened to my crop picture? This is the crop picture that that I just cropped. Can you see this is just the top of her head and her right in her shoulder? Okay, so this is the, the picture. However, I did not choose before I started, I did not choose my hoop that I wanted to sew this in. And you can, you can do that at the beginning. So let me show you quickly where you can do that. If you want to start with the hoop you want it in, um, you can go up here to File, and it's the same in P Design 9 or Next. File is the little flower up in the top left-hand corner, and you can go, I'm sorry, there's, they're in two places now, I forgot. This one's going to be under Design Settings, and I can tell it to... Um, be in my, I can put it in inches. Sorry, let me put it in inches instead of millimeters. I, I digitize in millimeters, but the hoop, sometimes it's easier for me. Go to the flower, come down to design settings, and then I can put it in the hoop I want. Now, in this case, I wanted it in an eight by eight hoop. I generally do these pretty large. Um, I like to do them pretty large. My favorite hoop to do these photo stitches in is that 14 by 14 hoop for my PR. That's my favorite one to use. I often, and then at the top here, you can choose your machine as well. And I like to use my PR hoops because I usually sew these on the PR. You don't have to. I just like to because then I have um, 10 colors and I can just let it go. Okay. So I have chosen my 
That's one way to choose your hoop. In P Design Next, let me bring that up. It's actually going to be on the main screen and it's going to say it's on the home tab and it's going to say design settings right here. So they moved it um, between nine and 10, that little thing. They put it under file in 10 and 11 and nine. It's right here on the home tab, design settings where you can change your hoop sizes. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way is actually right in the browser. So if you forgot, like I did, what hoop on my Luminaire? On this one, I wanted it in an 8x8 hoop. Um, it's kind of square the way it is now. So you could do it larger and do it like 10x10. 10 10, um, or you could do it 9x9. 9 9. So, so since the picture's kind of cropped square in this case, I would choose one of the square ones. So yes, you could you could use make it a little bigger if you wanted to. I'm just going to make it the same size I made it for them. Um, the reason I did that is I knew that I could find a frame that was that I could go to Michaels and buy a square 12 by 12 frame, and I could mat it and put it in a square frame. So that's why I chose that size, knowing that I could easily find a frame. Okay. Um, personally, I would not. I would not stitch these photo stitches in a magnetic frame. And the reason being there's so many stitches in them and those frames are very heavy. I don't, I don't think I would tell you, I would tell you to hoop, to hoop. You're only going to be hooping stabilizer. So when we get to the sewing part, I'll explain that more Maureen about that. Okay. Cause I normally don't use magnetic hoops when I stitch these out. Okay. So design settings on P design next is on the main home tab. It's right here. On 11, it was on under the blue flower on the left. So they changed it between 9 and 10. Okay? All right. So let's go back. I'm just going to click the photo stitch one color again. That will get us back up in there where we were. Okay? So that's the, the, the screen we were on. I'm going to click next. And since I've already changed the hoop, this is the other place, like I forgot, you know, to, to change my hoop. So down here where it says design setting, that's going to take me to the same place. So if I click that button down there, see, there's that same screen that we just saw. And I can choose my PR hoop and I'm going to use the 8x8. If you're using a Luminaire or one of the home machines, click the home machine up at the top. And choose the hoop you want. So like, let's say if you want the quilt frame, there's a six by six, there's an eight by eight. Since this is kind of square, eight by eight, you can do that. You could also do um, the nine and a half by nine and a half, or you could do the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So that would make it even larger. I just knew that I could find a 12 by 12 square frame. So that's why I chose eight by eight. Okay. So I'm just going to choose eight by eight. I'm going to choose my PR. So you choose which machines you have. Okay, so we're going to use the 8x8 frame. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we're in the 8x8 frame. Well, she's kind of small. So that's the 8x8 frame. That's the outline of it. But then she's kind of small. So there's a really cool little button that they added in P Design Next, I believe. It's fit to page. So I'm going to click fit to page. And look, now she's big. So that really helps because then you can get it as big as you can in that frame. Now, you notice there is a little bit of wiggle room all the way around. You can make it just a hair bigger as long as you don't go outside of the line. So I often do just pull it out from the corners and just make it a smidge and bigger so that it's about as large as it can possibly be in that hoop. Okay. Um, I have started doing a lot more of these um, pictures smaller. I I always used to do them very large and I get more detail. The bigger they are, the more detail you're going to see. The smaller they are, the less detail. So remember that. Okay. So I don't make hardly any of these smaller than eight by eight anymore, just because that gives enough detail. I usually make them larger, but this one was square and I was thinking of a frame that I could find. Okay. Because I knew I wanted to give it to them as a gift. Okay. All right, so there is the picture. I am going to click next. 
Okay. And it's not quite square. It's a little shorter. Okay. And I could have come down a little bit and let, let's go back. We can always go back. If we don't like what we see, we can go back. So down here, it says it's 6.7 by 6.85, 7.63 by 6.85. So it's a little bit short. So I'm actually going to go back one more screen. And I might bring this down just a little bit to the bottom so that it is a little more square. I'm hoping that I can get it fairly square. So that's how I did it is I just kind of looked at it. Click next again, and then I can see the size down here. So now it's closer, but it's still, it could go a little bit bigger width-wise. So just a little narrow. So let's just go this way just a little bit more. So that's a little bit more square. Let's see. Okay. So 6.86, it might need to come down a little bit. So I'm kind of trying to get it about the right size so that it's fairly close in size to, oops, I think I hit next too many times. So let's see if we can get down just a little bit. I think that's a little closer to being square. Let's see how we do here. Let me go back a screen and look at it. It's a little closer now. So I think that'll be okay. She wasn't exactly perfectly square. Okay. But that gives you an idea of what you can do. Now I'm a little bit too big for my hoop now. So I do need to bring this down a little bit and get it inside my, inside my hoop. I think we're okay. I just kind of played with the crop so that it's a little bit more square. I can't try to decide if it's the length or the width. That's not quite right. I think it's actually the width. So let me see. Because I don't have any of her hand in the bottom. So I think that might be better. Okay, so let me hit the fit to page again. Okay. She's still a little bit shorter. I know it was a little bit shorter. I don't want to pull her out of out of alignment. So let's see. It must be this way. I need to come down this way with my crop a little bit. Okay, let's try that and see. Yep, we're getting a little closer. Okay. So I think I'm happy with that. Oh, where do you where do you change from millimeters to inches? There's a couple places, Lynn. Um, the easiest place for me to show you right now where I am is on the corner of the the design page. There's a little button right in the left corner on the rulers that says inches, and if you click it again, it'll be millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to actually do that right now because I'm I'm going to cancel this for a second, and I'm going to go down and do that. Because I want to be in millimeters when I get ready to do this next part. Okay. So it's right here. There's that little button in the corner. And P Design Next is the same. It's got the little button in the corner. That's one of the places it's the easiest. But I like to digitize in millimeters. That's how I learned to digitize. And so I have a hard time digitizing. Um, I have a hard time digitizing in inches because I don't know exactly how big things are. Still not happy with the crop. I'm still playing around with it. <laughs> okay. I think it's a little bit better. All right. So we're going to bring her up. There we go. And I'm going to click next. So I think I'm happy with that. So we're going to click next. So now when we get to this page is where the two softwares are going to be different. Okay. So the settings are going to be a little different in the two softwares. So if you give me a second, I'm going to get my two software, um, my two settings page papers open on my book. Give me just a second here. I have to find find them. I've, I've been playing a lot with the software over the last few years. P Design Next, I could just do anything and it turned out perfect every time but when i got to 10 i had a really hard time because they changed something between 9 and 10 and it was really hard for me then to get good results with what i wanted 
So this is what I have discovered. When I get to this screen, this is where all of your parameters are going to be. This is where you're going to put all your different, your different um, settings in. And this is where you're going to, to fine tune this picture. So it will sew out. Okay. The thread chart. I am going to use for this picture, I am going to choose, now I'm in 11 and I can choose this. I In 11, I am going to choose my um, Pace Setter Pro, which is going to be my brother, my new brother software. There are 300 colors now and it has really nice flesh tones. So if you're doing children, um, Oh, no, Lisa, you may just have grids um, up on your on your uh, your design page. You may just need to turn your grid off. It, it'll be fine. So I'm going to pick, pick Paysetter Pro because I like that software. I like that thread chart when it comes to flush tones. You can also use um, the, the Madeira. I, the other one I use is Madeira Polyneon. OK. Iris is in here. Floriani is in here. So if you have Floriani software, use the Floriani soft, uh, thread. So there's a lot of new thread charts in PE Design 11. If you're using Next, you're going to be more limited because they didn't put in a bunch of thread charts until you got to 10 and 11. OK, so I am going to use the Pace Setter Pro, which is going to be my um, brother thread that I use most every day. And they have a lot of new colors that I really like. Now this will auto pick my colors for me. So I just chose, I'm going to choose auto select up here. Now I know that with color pictures, generally I use somewhere between 15 and 18 colors. Okay. For black and white pictures, I usually use somewhere around 10 or 12 colors. That's just kind of where I found that seems to work. And I do have this in the instructions. I found that the newer software, actually 15 colors works pretty well. And I believe that's what I did Harper in was 15 colors. So this max number of colors right up the top here, I'm going to tell it to be 15. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with P Design 9 or Next. I usually use somewhere around 15 to 18 in there as well. So I'm going to set it. It's going to be similar. So if you give me a second, I'll bring that one up so that you can see what it looks like in that software. So this is Next for those of you who are using this. I'm going to go get her picture and bring it in here. So we'll just do this real quick so you can see what it looks like on the screen. It's going to be very similar. It's going to look almost identical. Okay, they haven't really changed the software a whole lot. So I'm going to crop this up. Okay, whoops, maybe not. Usually it lets me crop. There we go. Okay, so this is next. This is version 9. So for those of you who have this, you can just and the P Design Plus uh, Two is going to look a lot like this one. Okay. There's a few last little buttons in here. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to image tuner. So I know I'm going to be going up at least three. I might go four on this one as well. And I'm going to go up one for the brightness. So I'm done. Do the, those settings are going to be the same. Okay. I'm going to click next on in. And this is next. I'm going to hit the fit to page button is down here as well. So I'm going to hit fit to page. And you can see this one fits to page a little larger. Um, it is a little bit large, larger than I'd like it to be, so I'm going to pull it in just a hair. Okay, and I'm going to click next. And then this is the same page. So this page looks slightly different than the one in 11. So again, it auto-select for my colors. I am going to use the Brother Embroidery instead of in Brother Embroidery. On this one, I'm going to choose the Madeira Poly Neon because I also have all of those colors. And that's what I have always done photo stitch in. And then I'm going to choose maybe 15 colors here as well. Okay. 
So now they're both in the same place. But I want to go back to 11 because I'm going to show you something here. It may not let me. Let me see if I can just bring it up. Okay. So this is 11. So can you see the difference on the screen on the picture of, of the photo stitch? See how different they, they put a new um, a new reference field on in 10 and 11, and it's so much better. You can really tell what it's going to look like. And, and it really does look like what you're going to see here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my 15 colors. I think I'm good with that. I'm on this one. This is P design 11. Again, I'm going to go ahead and use paste setter pro. Now this is where the settings change. When I used the old software, I would take the sewing option where it says course fine. Okay. I would move this slider all the way to find for every single picture. Okay. I do not do that anymore because they have changed something um, in the software. So I leave that slider in the middle. Sometimes I've moved it up one click. But what, it hap what happens is it seems like it takes the detail out and it smooths it out. So I would tell you to leave it in the middle for the most part. Okay. I also need to bring run pitch means the stitch length. I need to bring the stitch length down. I got to make the stitches smaller so that I can see the detail of the picture. So I'm going to bring these down. I usually, the lowest it'll let me do is two millimeters, which, you know, when you're sewing, that's a pretty small stitch, okay? I usually use about 2.1, 2.2, somewhere in there. Let's just try 2.1 on this one. And then sew page color. Um, I want it to sew the background, yes. And, and then there's a little thing now that you can ask, you can put a masking outline on there, so it'll actually put like a satin stitch around the scent outside of your design if you want that. I never choose that. And then if I had forgotten to change the brightness, I can still change the brightness here and the contrast here, okay, on this page. I'm going to update this photo, and this is going to look really different. So I'm just going to hit this little button down here that says update preview because I've changed all these things, but I haven't updated it yet. So just a minute and wait till you see the update. So I'm going to hit update preview and now look at the picture. There's a lot more detail in it. The colors are more true. Um, and what it does is over here on the left, it gives you the colors that are going to come up in the machine. And I'm going to look at these and see if they're the same as my other ones that I actually stitched her out in. Now, I will say that depending on your computer, sometimes you will get different results than I do. It depends on the resolution of your screen. And so um, you may not have the exact same numbers here you know, like if you were doing this picture, you would, you may not have the exact same numbers here that I do. Okay. So I'm just looking to see if they're the same and the are the same. So I, I did this on my computer at the store and it's the same computer. Basically this, this one is, so they did turn out the same. Okay. So now this is where I would look at this and say, okay, am I happy with this? Do I need to change something? Do I need to change the colors? Do, do they look too dark? These look pretty good to me. I'm actually pretty happy with these and they are the same, same colors I stitched her in. Okay. So when I hit that button and updated the preview, it made a huge difference. You can also hit select candidates. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that this is going to work. Every now and then, if you hit the select candidates button, the whole program shuts down. So let's see what happens tonight. This is going to give some different settings and give you some other options. The one in black with the black outline is actually the um, one that is chosen right now. And that's the one I'm going to keep. Sometimes I can't really tell here how much better they are. I can see in this screen, what it's going to look like. You can see Harper's eyes. 
Okay. You can, the colors look good in her skin. The color, the only color that was a little off was in her sleeper. It's actually a Green Bay Packers sleeper. And so it turned it just a little bit gray when I lightened it up, but there's not that much of it showing that it was not that noticeable. So I was looking more for her face and her eyes. I wasn't as worried about her clothing. Okay. So I was looking at her face and eyes. So I'm pretty happy with this. So let's see what the other software does. So let's just bring up P Design next. P Design Next is going to have different settings. Okay. This is the older software. It works very well, but I have to use different settings. So I have used my Madeira Poly Neon. So that's the, I can't use my, my brother colors in this one because I don't have it. It doesn't have that chart. I am going to pull that coarse fine slider all the way to fine because I know it has to be. You do not do that in 11 because it won't give you the same results. I'm also going to bring my run pitch or the stitch length down to about 2.1, 2.2, somewhere in there. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave all of this other stuff alone and I'm going to click the update preview. I chose 15 colors also. We already did that. So I chose my 15 colors. So let's see what this one looks like in the Madeira. Now, this representation is not going to be as good as the other one. So, like, here is my updated version with this. I think that would, will stitch out pretty well. Her colors and her skin are not going to be quite as good. Let's look at the other one quick. I'm just going to click on the other one and look at the difference. This is 11. Okay, and I really like the brother colors because they have really nice flesh tones. Okay, so there's P Design 11, and here's P Design Next, and it's going to sew out fine. It actually will sew out fine, and the way I tell with P Design Next if it's going to sew out okay, and if I don't have to go back and change some things, and let's try one thing. I often needed to use more colors, so I'm going to pull up and do um, 18 colors instead of only 15. And let's update this preview and see if that makes any difference. Because if I don't see much difference on the screen, I don't use that extra colors. Um, and, and Jan, this will sew out fine. The, the reason it looks different is because of the, the screen was updated in 11 and it's much easier. The realistic preview screen is what I'm trying to say, is not as good in, in next. However, what I would do with this, I think it's going to look, I'm still in next, and I think it's going to sew out just fine. So what I will do at this point is I will click finish, and then I would print this out on a good printer and look at it on a piece of paper with P Design Next. And I put that in the notes because I that's how I always knew. If it looked like it printed, it was going to stitch out just fine. Okay, so this is next, and this still looks good. I mean, I think it looks good, but it's not, the flesh tones are not quite there. And this is 11. And it's because I could choose those other colors. The, the brother colors just have really good flesh tones. And I'm, I'm really happy with the way they look with for people now. Okay, so this is 11. And I'm happy with those settings. But remember on the that coarse fine slider i left it in the middle i did not move it on the old version i moved it all the way up to fine because you have to in that software you have to move that okay so we're going to talk about the stitching here in a minute carol if you give me a, few, a couple minutes and we'll we'll talk about how to stitch it okay so this is p design 11 and um you can't get p design next anymore but I wanted to talk about Next because it's it works fine. I have done lots and lots of photo stitches in it, and it works very well. You have to do a little bit more printing to see the final results. I can tell now that this is going to sew out fine in 11 by looking at the screen. On P Design Next, I'm going to go back again. I may have to I may have to print this one and look at it on a piece of paper 
And, and normally if it prints okay, it's going to stitch okay. But I have, but the, the realistic preview screen on Next was not quite as good. But that looks pretty good, actually. I mean, I think that would sew out just fine. Okay. So if you only have, if you still have Next, if it's, a, it's an older software, if that's what you have, give it a try because it does a fine job. And I'll show you some of the ones I've done in Key Design 9. Okay. All right. So I think I'm happy with that. I think this is 11. I went back to 11. Okay. I'm going to click finish. Now, this is where everybody freaks out. Do not look at this screen and freak out because it will always look terrible. Don't, don't freak out. Okay. What we saw in the last screen is the way it's going to look. Okay. Don't freak out when you see this because it's always bad. This realistic preview always looks bad. And that it, it, will pr it will stitch out the way it looked in the previous screen. All right. So if I want to see this um, by printing it, I'm going to go back and do the same thing with nine. I'm going to slip, slip back here. And I think I'm actually happy with this. So I'm going to click finish on this one as well. You cannot. It does not have a photo stitch. So, yeah, tool shed does not have photo stitch. Okay. The lines are jump stitches, Jan. It's just a realistic preview. Do not look at the screen. It will, it, the last screen we saw, that's how it's going to print. This is the old software, the older software P design next. So, at this point, what I do is I go up to the little flower. I go to print and I go to print setup. And I did this every single time. I want to make it reduce size and normal stitch image. Okay. Up here. And then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go to file again, print and preview. And I'm going to look at this. And then I'm going to click print on my printer. And I'm going to print this out. And I'll show you what this looks like when it prints out. Because this is how I could tell if my design was actually going to stitch out okay, is I printed every single thing out right here in the older software in PDesign 9. I do not need to do that anymore with 11. Because I could tell in that previous screen that I it was going to stitch out fine. Okay, so I, I don't print much anymore unless I'm using Next. Okay, so... When you download, if you have PDesign Next, make sure that you download the, the instructions for that because the settings are in there and they are different than PDesign 11. If you have PDesign 10, the settings will be the same as the 11 package. Okay, so make sure you, you um, download the right ones. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So at this point, I'm going to go grab that piece of paper that just it out. I'm going to look at it and it actually looks pretty good. Um, there's always a, when I use the Madeira, I had to use Madeira on this one. When I use Madeira, there's always a really bright pink it wants to pull and I would have to change that color. How do you print again? You go to um, the little file and print and you can set it up the way you want it and you can also print preview okay so there's the print preview in p design 11. okay i i would have to in uh p design next i would have to change a couple colors in here because it picked those really bright bright print pinks okay i i am finally getting used to P design 11 and P design 10. Um, I finally discovered that I cannot change that coarse fine slider. I can slide it up one notch, but no more. Cause otherwise what it does is it smooths out the details so much that there's no detail. So I, I finally gotten that I can, I can really get some good results with 11. 
Okay, so let me show you some pictures. So there's the there's our picture. It is an auto digitizer, but you can see I did a lot of work. I played around with things. And you can go back and forth like I did earlier between all the different settings. And you sometimes just have to go back and forth until you get what you want. How long has it been? Oh, between 11 and 9. There was a 10 in between, Colleen, and... Um, P Design Next came out with, oh golly, uh, with the Quattro. So P Design Next is about 15 years old or more. And P Design 11 is not really new either. P Design 11 came out about four or five years ago now. So it's not really super new either. Um, if you want, if you have a choice, if you don't have Next, just buy 11. That's what you can buy now new. P Design Next, a lot of you have it because you got it with a sewing machine. And I wanted to show you, you can still do these photo stitches. And I've done tons of them. So let me show you some of the photo stitches I've done over the years in different uh, versions of the software because I have pictures. Okay. So I can bring them up on my screen. So let me get, I'm just going to pull these two down. And I'm going to open up. I just got pictures of the photo stitches. Okay. So if you give me a second, I'm going to go, whoops, let me open. If I open this up with my little photo program, then I can kind of go from one to other. Okay. So this is a, one of those really large ones. This is called Gigi Kitten. And Gigi Kitten is... Um, that one is done in that great big, huge 14 by 14 frame. That one took about 20 hours to stitch out. That is done in P Design Next in version nine. Okay. This is uh, American Gothic. I, I have seen a million, uh, you know, uh, of these pictures because I grew up in Anamosa. Okay. And that's where Grant Wood is buried. And, and that's where he lived around that area. And I have seen this picture a million times. This was done in nine. This is also done in P Design Next. This was done in P Design Next. This is uh, Beauty and the Beast. I used to watch that show years ago. So that was one that I did. This is the little dog. Now this one was done in PE Design 7. This is an older version of the software and it's still very good. That one's done in P Design 7. And you can see I cropped around him in that one. Okay. This is, let's see, I have to look. Okay. So there's two of these pictures. This picture here is a picture. Yes, it's me. I was four. And my mother remembered these pictures. My mom had Alzheimer's, so she remembered. Okay. This one was done in PE Design 11. And the next one was done in PE Design 6. So look at the difference in the quality of the, P, the, of the photo stitch. That's 11. Okay. 11. And then the second one was 6. 11 and 6. So look at the difference. So these, these there's a lot of difference in the software in the, in the, over the years. Okay. You know, I don't have a picture of the Cubs one. This is a picture of my grandma. This was done in, in P Design 6. And then these, I've got three little girls that I did for a friend. And these were all done in P Design 7, I believe. Okay. This one was done in Next. This is the, this is my eagle. I called it Freedom. That one's, that one's done in Next. There's an, oh, I had another one of the, of the, the bur, of the little kitty cat. Sorry. I, had, I didn't, thought I had gotten all the duplicates out of here. And then here's Harper. Harper was done in 11. Okay, here's my owl, who, who me, it's called. Who me was done in version nine. And that is also done in that great big humongous hoop. So that one's 14 by 14 and it took 20 hours to sew out. Look at the eyes. Okay, and then my tiger. A lot of you have seen my tiger. My tiger is also done in that huge hoop. And it was, it took about 20 hours to stitch out. And he's got, and it, it, you can see the eyes. They're so good. Okay. Now, these were done in older software. This is, again, I'm sorry, my mother remembered these pictures. <laughs> so this picture was a picture of me. I was three in this picture. And these were done in P Design 6. All three of these, there's three of them. 
there was three. I think there's one more picture. And then this is John Wayne. John Wayne was done in P Design 7. And 7 was the very first um, P Design that I could get in color. I could actually do color pictures. I'd always done black and whites before that because I had trouble with color. And this one turned out really good in color. So that's P Design 7. And then this is Ken, this is Tim's mom and dad. And this was done in 7 also. Now, I do like to do uh, dolls as well. So this is a doll of my friend Connie's. This was done in P Design. Um, I think it was done in 7. So this was done. You don't. And I'm going to get to that in a minute, Maureen. So this is uh, this is Little Lou. Okay. And then here's, a, here's a picture of the whole Little Lou. I just did the face too. So that was done in 7. And then this is a picture of my mom. And this one was done in 6, actually. P Design 6. This is my mother. She was 12 in this picture. And then this is my mother's graduation um, picture. And that one was done also in P Design 6. And then I started doing some, I love to do um, uh, celebrities. So I did, um, I did Lucille Ball. This one was done in 11. And then this is one of the very first photo stitches I ever got to really turn out well. This is a friend's daughter's. And this was done in P Design 6. No, 7, 7, because I had the color. So it's 7. Okay. A friend of mine likes to take pictures of landscapes. So this was the bridge over the Sabula, um, between Sabula and Savannah, Illinois. And this is my uh, godson, Shane, when he was two. He was about a year and a half or two there. And then this is a newer one. This one's done in 11. This was a little snow leopard. And here's a really cool owl that I did. And that was done in 11. And then I did this one of Tom Selleck. This one was done in PE Design. I think it was done in 7. So this is done in PE Design 7. And then this is a landscape. But not, again, a landscape. Okay. Landscape. Um, landscapes look really great. I love this. And this was done in 9. Okay, here's, a, here's my dad's graduation picture. That was done in P-Design 6. So I've been doing these for a long time. Now, this is P-Design. This is photo stitch mono. So all there is is black thread with white fabric. Isn't that cool? That was That's a picture that's in the software that I picked, and it, work, it turns out really cool. So this zebra is right in the software. You can pick that picture. So that one's cool. That's that mono, and I like that. So that's all of the pictures. I don't have my Cubs one in here, though. Um, uh, Margaret, I'll have to see if I can find it. I don't have that one. Okay. So there's some, there's, a, there's all the different pictures. <clears throat> I did a lot of different, there was, a, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I guess I do, Teresa, you don't have to use your multi-needle. I just like to be able to walk away from it. <laughs> so yes, I do usually. All right. So a lot of people were saying, I don't see any puckering. And the reason you don't is you have to be very careful when you when you, um, when you you sew these. And I'm going to tell you how I sew them. Okay. And this is also in the instructions for both. I have made one change. Okay. So what I normally do is I like to sew these on 100% cotton fabric. So use a cotton fabric. Really helps. Okay. I like to, so what I do now, I used to adhere two pieces of, of fusible no-show mesh on the back, but now I use two layers of Shape Flex, you know, that Pellon Shape Flex that we've been using on our, um, that we've been using on our uh, uh, Kimberbell projects. I use that instead because it's a little easy, it, it doesn't, um, it's not as tender when it comes to the heat of the iron as the no-show mesh was. So I, so the instructions do say no-show mesh, but I use Pellon. I use the Pellon Shape Flex now. Two layers on the back of my fabric. Okay. Um, yes, you could put them on canvas, Cindy, but you would still need to use stabilizer because they're very stitch intensive. No, I do not wash my fabric, Jan. 
Um, and then what I do is I put in the hoop, the do not hoop your fabric on these. There's so many stitches in them. If you hoop your fabric, it's going to be wrinkly. Okay. I use a uh, perfect stick or the dime. Um, what's it called? The dime, um, the sticky one. It's the sticky tear away stabilizer. I can't think what the dime one is called. I use mostly, I have the Floriani, so that's what normally what I, maybe I put it in my 11 one. Let me look. Let's see. Um, I don't know if I put it in here or not. Yep. So a tacky tear away. So I use either the dime or I usually use the Floriani perfect stick. So it's a tacky tear away. Put that in your hoop, score the paper away and expose the tacky. Take your piece of fabric that you put the two pieces of shape flex on and stick it down in the hoop. Don't hoop the fabric because it will pucker if you hoop the fabric. Okay. And then I put it in the machine and I lift up the hoop and I float two pieces of medium, or in this case, I use the dime light tear away because it's about the same weight as the uh, medium tear away that Floriani has. So I, I have, so there's five pieces of stabilizer. You got your fabric, two pieces of the Pellon Shape Flex stuck down in the hoop to the perfect stick. Okay. Sticky tear away. And then you're going to raise your hoop up and you're going to slide two pieces of tear away underneath. So there's five pieces of stabilizer. No, I do not pre-wash the fabric. I, I don't pre-wash anything. Okay, so don't hoop the fabric, float the fabric on the sticky stabilizer and they'll lay nice and flat. And the other thing that helps them stay flat is the fact that I've kind of stopped. You notice that a lot of these older ones were cropped around the subject. And if you don't crop them, they're more squared or rectangular. And then you don't um, you don't get the puckering. Because you get the puckering sometimes with the rounded, you know, the rounded uh, masking. So that's why I kind of stopped. Um, oh, <laughs> hi, Jerry. I'm glad you like your, your granddaughter. <laughs> Jerry's on here. This is his granddaughter, Harper. So um, that, that they're the recipients of the, the one I made at Christmas time. And there's one hanging in the, in the um, store. So, but... I would tell you to not crop any more than you have to. Sometimes I have to. Um, somebody asked what kind of needle I use. I just use my number 11 embroidery needles to do these. So I do not, Sue. I do, I do not um, use a, a basting stitch. I just use the, I just, just stick it down on the tacky paper. I've, I've never used a basting stitch on them. So, um, but I do, I have found that most of the ones now, I, when I've stopped cropping, I get a much better flatter result because I don't have all of those curves with a lot of stitches. Cause these will be a lot of stitches. Okay. So like, like the one of Harper here was 115,000 stitches, which is not a lot in comparison to some of the other ones, because it, it's only eight by eight, but like that, like the owl and the, the eagle and the, and the tiger, those were over 300,000 stitches because they were done in that huge, great big, um, those huge, great big hoops. And they take like 20 hours to stitch out. So yeah, you do one half and then it, you flip it over and do the other half in the PR. And so those take a long time. So these are stitch intense. So you do have to use a lot of stabilizer. And if you use cotton fabric, the other thing I found is that I use cotton fabric. When I switched away from using um, polyester fabric, the cotton fabric holds stitches much better. Okay. So that's, that's how I stitch these. Um, I say, I was going to see if there was anything else in my notes that I wanted to talk to you about. I just had my little photo gallery, like the back of the notes, there'll be some photos in here of some of the photo stitches. 
so that I've done. But I've started photo stitching again. I, I hadn't done any for a long time, and I saw that picture of Harper, and I just had to do that. Oh, just, Marsha, if you need to stop it, you know, like, you know, these take a while, so you may not be able to do them all in one setting. Just turn off the machine. Usually what I do first is I just cut my thread, and then I just shut the machine down and take the hoop out. And when you, when you um, turn on the machine again the next day, it'll ask you, do you want to start where you left off? And you just say, okay. And then you can put your hoop back in. And then I back up maybe 20 or 30 stitches and start. So it should be fine. Yeah, I have to do that all the time. I just have to turn it off. Now, when I run my PR sometimes, I'll actually, yes, we have P-Design 11 in the store. I know I have several. And I also have Palette. So if you have baby lock products and you prefer to have baby lock software, I also have the palette software, which is the same. It does the same thing. I just happen to have P design because I have brother, I have the brother software. So that's it. The P the palette software looks the same. It just has a different opening screen. Okay. Now, if you give me a moment, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I wanted to show you a couple of the things that are coming up. So how is, does everybody understand what we did? And, and have any other questions about the photo stitches. I'm just going to shop, stop sharing my screen so I can show you. And we need to, we need to also uh, draw for our drawing. So give me a second here. I got a couple things I wanted to show you. Okay. So hopefully, whoops, second, I can bring my screen back up. There we go. I can see myself. Look at there. Okay. So and I can see the comments. So I wanted to show you next week then, this is the last Sunday of the month. So next week we're going to start up. Oh yeah, Lynn's working on her puppy dog. Okay, so next week we're going to start the March um, cutie. So this is the March cutie with the kites on it. So we're going to be doing this one. Okay, next week we're going to do the piecing on this. And this one's done with um this is a i'd never done one of these before this is a disappearing nine patch block so we're going to be doing this one next week the next two weeks will be this um this uh table topper so we'll be doing the the embroidery and the um the piecing okay on this one and then the following week i'm, I'm coming up with a new class i wanted to try something um that we could do with the scan and cut because I wanted to see if my scan and cut would cut this because I'm starting to do some things with chipboard. And I don't know if any of you have ever used chipboard or tried cutting it with your scan and cut, but by the way, it cuts really well on the scan and cut. So we're going to make a fun little um, ironing and um, cutting pad. So this is a little booklet that I have made. Sorry, my, my picture is kind of yellow. There we go. That's better. Okay, I made this little book. I have a little um, small rotary cutter that I was able to put. I, I just used some Velcro here, okay? And then this opens up. There's some Velcro here, and this opens up, and there is my small ironing pad and my small cutting mat. So you can carry this. Like, this would be really great for, like, paper piecing or if you need to go to a little retreat and you wanted to have a little something you could cut on. So we're going to make this. We're going to cut it out with the scan and cut. And we're going to learn some fun stuff about chipboard and taping and, and gluing. And it's just going to be something fun. I wanted to try this. So this is what we're going to do uh, the third week in February. So it, it closes up like this. So here's we're going to make the little ironing mat. I actually made the little ironing mat. And here's the little, and this little mat, this little cutting mat came from the Dollar Tree. So I'll give you a, like a supply list. I got most of this stuff from the Dollar Tree. So, okay. All right, so there's that. And then let's see, it closes. See, I've got some little Velcro closures and it just closes. And it's thin and see how easy it is to cover, to carry it. And then I've got my little rotary cutter that goes on to the, to the little lid. Okay, isn't that cool? So we're gonna we're gonna try something. I, I I made up a design and I thought we're gonna try something fun and different. Okay, so that's gonna be the third week in 
in February. And then the fourth week in February, we're going to do another software class, but we'll be doing something probably in uh, PEP. So in, in Perfect Embroidery Pro. Okay. So we'll do something in that, the other software next time. Okay. So are there any other questions about photo stitch? Everybody going to give it a try? I know a lot of you have the brother software or the palette software, and I know a lot of you have it. So give it a try. It's really fun. Pick your pictures carefully, you know, look at the pictures before you, you know, you can't, don't, don't try to do one with 10 people in it. Try to do one with one or two people. Okay. I love, I love photo stitch. I have done this, but um, I've done this for years. You know, I started doing this like 20 years ago, um, but go, go download these little instructions for the little dog and do the little dog. The little picture of the dog is in there and you can go through and I, I have everything written out for you. And if you're using a 10 or 11, use the 11 instructions. And if you're using next, use the next instructions because the settings are different. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we're going to give away. Is everybody ready for the, where are the instructions? Okay. Who asked where are the instructions? Uh, Marsha, I, I explained where the instructions are at the beginning of the video. So if you go back and watch this the very beginning of this video, you will know where the instructions are. They are on the Dropbox, the first, very first post on So Along With Jan in the Dropbox. If you're watching on YouTube, they will be under the description of the video. And I will put them there also. But I know, Marsha, you're part of the group. So go to the group, the very first post, click Dropbox and the software, and they're in there. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Colleen wants to know how much it costs. So yeah, if you call me, I will I will get you more. In. Okay, so now we're going to give away the little Kimber Bear. All right. So if you are from away from here, you will need to personal message me or email me your address so I can mail it to you. If you're closer to one of the stores, then you can come pick it up. Okay. So this, we're going to give away a Kimber Bear tonight. So I have to get over here to my lap, my little tablet, and I'm going to start going back and forth on the, all the comments. Remember when you, to do this, you have to comment. So every week when you're here, comment and you'll be on here. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm going back and forth and I'm just going to put my finger down on somebody's name. Okay. I'm mixing them all up. And I'm going to put my name finger down on somebody's name. And it's Jan Stegan. Jan Stegan, you won the little Kimber Bear. So Jan, send me your address or maybe you just want to drop down and pick it up. I know you're a little ways away, but you can come and come and pick it up too if you want to. But Jan Stegan won the little teddy bear. Okay. All right. So any other questions? Everybody, everybody going to try photo stitch now? Yep, I, I hope Jan's still here. She was having some internet problems. Are you still here, Jan? I think she was. Yep, Jan Stegan. Did, did, is she still here? I think she is. She was having some problems with her internet earlier, so. All right, so um, if, if there's no other questions, remember, if you need, if it, go go back and watch the little beginning of the video if you can't remember where the, where the, uh, um, where the, the instructions are and I will put the, and the people that are watching on YouTube, I will put it in the description below the video. Okay. Oh, and, and uh, Lynn, are you, you, okay. Oh, Lisa. Yeah. Lisa, you're going to use your PRs. The PR works really well for the, for the photo stitches. So how do you mount the fabric? That's a good question. Who won the prize? Who asked that? Who won the prize? Jan, you did. Jan Stegan, you won the prize. That's who won. You must have been gone. I didn't think I'd seen you. Uh, so you won the prize, Jan Stegan. Okay. Um, how do I mount it? Um, when I do the photos, um, I don't have one here close enough that I can grab it. What I do is I use these um, boards that are made for art, for like uh, handwork, like cross stitch and stuff, and they have tacky on them. And I like to frame them. So I buy those and then I stick it down and then I make a mat because I actually have a mat cutter and I make a mat. 
Yeah. So Jan, if you, if you need me to mail this to you, otherwise, if you're coming down my way, you can pick it up. So let me know. Okay. But you won the little teddy bear. Okay. So, um, and sometime if you want me to show you how to, um, frame them, if you get going on these, I could do a class that we could actually frame a photo stitch and I could show you how I cut my mats and everything. Would you like me to do that sometime? Because that'd be something that that I found that I I bought a mat cutter. It's, they're not a real expensive item. Okay, thanks, Jan. Um, they're not a real expensive thing. And I do a lot of handwork. And so a lot of my stuff is not, um, not, Yes, to the matting. Okay, I might do that because the, so the matting, most of the stuff I make is not very standard size. So, um, you know, if you buy a mat, you can buy a standard frame and then you can mat it so it fits in that frame. Okay, so I've learned that, the and it was worth, I mean, it, was, it didn't cost me a ton of money. I want to say $100 or so for the mat cutter. And I do so much handwork that, um, that it really did work quite well. And so um, that would be something we could do. Maybe I'll do that sometime. We'll just have a mat, we'll have a matting class or I'll frame a couple of photo, I'll frame some photo stitches for you and you can see what it, what it's like to frame them. So I use these sticky boards that have like a tacky surface. And then I, I use them to the size of a standard frame. And then I cut a mat to fit it. So, all right, the, yep, and I, you, I've got, well, this is a different kind of cutter. The mats, um, I actually have a, a Logan mat cutter. It's made for mats for pictures, for picture frames. So um, it's a little different. So, okay. All right. So I will, um, I will uh, see you all next week. We're going to be doing some more some more Kimberbell cuties and um, let me know if there's anything I can answer for you and I will be seeing you next week. So thanks everybody. And Jan, I'll put your little teddy bear in the drawer for you so you can come pick him up. So thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good day. Question on the older pictures that you did with your mom and dad and your grandma. Um, oh yes, those were all scanned in. Yes. I scanned those in. I don't know who asked that. Oh, that was Rebecca. Yes, I just scanned them off of the old photographs because those were old photographs. So, yep, I just scanned them into my computer with my scanner on my printer. That worked really well. And, you know, the new, you know, so much of the new stuff we do with a phone now or, or, or a camera. And, you know, my old pictures were all done. You know, they were all paper. <laughs> so I just scanned them in. Yep. Yep. So it works really, really good. What resolution? Usually, I put it in the instructions too, Anna. Um, most um, most scanners are now around uh, 300 to 600. Mine defaults at 600, which is, is fine. Okay, so the 600 DPI is what they kind of default at most of the time now. You don't need to make it any more than that. So, all right. Great questions, everybody. Thank you. Have a good, good weekend. Bye-bye.